A couple of other things of interest. Again, we're not tracking a lot of other bills. We are, are mainly focused on the uh, budget because that is the big game in town this year in Tallahassee. Uh, but a couple of things, there is a Senate bill, 1124, I believe the House Companion is uh, 371. It effectively eliminates the 1,000 foot rule for, uh, uh, that we have right now for group homes, for people in a planned residential community. I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with that, uh, with that bill or not. Our agency is neutral, what the bill would do. Uh, today, if a group home of six or fewer people uh, wants to go set up in a residential neighborhood. Uh, this law basically preempts local zoning ordinances and says that those group homes get zoning. Uh, but they, it has to be at least a thousand feet away from the nearest group home. And the reason that's in the law, I believe, is to uh, uh, avoid what some people would refer to as a DD ghetto, where you can go in and just have group home after group home after group home after group home, and then before too much longer, it looks like an institution. And especially if you make it a gated community and put a wall around it. Uh, uh, but a lot of parents and a lot of people have been willing to step up to the plate and purchase properties that would be, you know, go in together, purchase properties, and, and to have a place, have an option where, uh, where their loved one will have a place to live on a long-term basis. So it's a... Uh, there is a tremendous back and forth on that. The, those bills are moving through the legislature. Uh, we have taken, again, the agency is taking a neutral position. Uh, I do believe that some fairly simple tweaks uh, to that bill would probably dissolve a lot of the issues that the opponents have, understanding that there are some people who are strictly ideologically driven uh, that will never like this concept, but a lot of people um, I tend to be a little bit more on the practical side because, again, uh, I'm, I'm all, for all practical purposes living with an individual with a disability who has a, uh, a caregiver who is in excellent health. But again, she's in her mid 80s. That's not going to happen. That's not going to be the case uh, forever. There's a bill running uh, going through that I believe uh, is pretty exciting. It offers a prepaid uh, plan for uh, families. Uh, and this would probably uh, be more of interest to uh, younger families who have children, but it would be something in concept very akin to the prepaid tuition where families could voluntarily choose to make uh, uh, monetary contributions into a fund that would be managed by a responsible entity. And then that would provide uh, some dollars later on in life, uh, for instance, when uh, that person then ages out of the school system and maybe need supported employment for a little while to keep, you know, to get them going so they don't just drop off the cliff uh, as can happen today. So it, it is a way, uh, I'm really excited about that because that actually taps into the resources uh, that families uh, are, are typically willing to do. It, it taps into uh, uh, to a resource out there that uh, and, and it kind of takes it out of the state budget process, which is so, as you all have seen, is so sensitive to ups and downs in the economy. It, it, it lets us take our future back into our own hands a little bit. So I really like that. Uh, another uh, issue that may be of interest to some of you, the uh, governor's task force on autism. Uh, the governor last week extended that until 2011, and there are a... Uh, a number of autism-related bills that are also moving through uh, uh, the session. A little bit about the future, and, and uh, I'll try to wrap up pretty quickly here. Uh, I think, as you know, we're in, we're in a very historic uh, economic crunch, and I believe this signals the uh, beginning of a fundamental restructuring of the economy, not only here in Florida, but across the nation. Uh, manufacturing the old time industries that have sustained this nation and uh, uh, they, they truly are, we are retooling that. And uh, so I think some of the, the shock we're seeing, of course, in Florida we just had a run up, particularly in real estate prices that just uh, was not supported by either value, unfortunately. And I think we're going to see, I think you're seeing a correction, but uh, Florida is a great place to live. There's a lot of people 
that are here. There's a lot of people that want to be here. And uh, one thing I'll tell you, as I was coming down last night, I got into what was literally stop and go, bumper to bumper traffic on a six-lane interstate, I-75. There's so many people down right here in this area. I mean, it started up in Gainesville, and it was a 50-mile traffic jam until I got uh, to uh, to the turnpike. Uh, so this is an attractive place to be, and, uh, and this state will grow, but I think you're going to see growth become less and less uh, important. Another thing I think that's important for the future as it relates to what we do is I think you're going to see more and more of a shift towards trying to empower families and consumers. We have been talking that game for a number of years now. I think you're going to continue to see things happening that are going to, um, that are going to empower family members and consumers to take even further control of their lives and their situations. Uh, with that control, of course, comes responsibility. But that's okay. That's okay, because most people are willing and capable of stepping up to the plate. Along those lines, we're moving uh, right now. We're making plans, uh, again, with the stakeholder involvement. We're not going to do anything without stakeholder involvement. But we're moving forward with plans to uh, uh, develop at least a model where we could shift to individual budgets, where uh, basically turns the process uh, upside down from where we are today, where today you come in, you uh, you have a support plan, that support plan is costed out and that becomes your cost plan. Uh, so you have professionals who prescribe uh, both the mix of service and the duration and frequency of what you ought to, to be getting. Uh, there are a number of states uh, that have actually turned that around the other way and based on the characteristics of the individual, um, uh, where they live, uh, what types of disabilities, what kinds of assistance do they need in order to, uh, to, to have a good life, that, that you can take that and you can put it and you can actually produce a budget for a person so that the family, the consumer will have an amount of money to work with then they sit down with the professionals and they decide what is the appropriate mix of service. What will best serve my family in my unique situation? Uh, because I truly believe that nobody in Tallahassee knows what you need better than you do. No outside organization and as much as I uh, just think David Johnson walks on water, I think you know even better than he does what you need. Um, so that's part of where uh, I think the future is going to take us. Because I believe that will take us to a program that will be sustainable and it will also leverage those resources in the community. It will provide incentives for people to step up to the plate rather than disincentives uh, that may be, you know, that, that I fear are really a feature of our system today. So I believe you'll see that. 